Oh, fuck. Across the back of the paintwork, you can see where it's been throwing oil out across the back of the car. So that now is officially the longest I've driven Alice since she's had a new engine. Hi there guys, welcome to another episode. Now in the last episode, I was a bit depressed at the end. Um, I didn't make my goal, I was planning on it. Um, I don't know whether I was a bit too stressed, a bit too... Uh, I don't know, really. It, it didn't go according to plan. I've had a few comments put down below on the video as to uh, how I broke the camshaft and if I broke the camshaft, did I break any valves? Um, and I'll talk you through what happened, I'll show you how it happened and I'll show you why I didn't bend any valves. Right, so these are the timing tools that you use for a black top or silver top ZTEC engine. This is the pin that fits in the side of the engine. And that fits just there. There's a little bung there that you take out. It's just a 10 mil nut that you take out. So when you take that out, you can screw that in. You screw that all the way in. As you turn the engine around, the crankshaft comes and it hits that. And that means that that is a top dead center. The next tool is this one. And this is the one that caused the damage. This one fits in the back of the camshafts. This is my, the broken part of the camshaft. Um, and as you can see, it's got a slot in it. As you can also see, the slot has a top and a bottom. As you can also see, the slot is offset. So it's not in the middle, depending on which way around you put it. Um, now when you put the bar in, So when you put the bar in, now this is my inlet manifold, this is my inlet camshaft, when you put the bar in, the bar fits inside that slot like that, and then it should rest against the head, locking that camshaft into the right position. Now obviously, the camshafts can be put in 180 degrees in either direction. And what I did, was put it in that way around instead of that way around now this is the way the camshaft should be set up with the line at the top and what I did was to have the, the line here where the plate is upside down so as I put the cap on to tighten it down these went into the thread of the head and as I started to tighten it down I didn't get as far as the 19 newton meters that is required it as you can see it bent it here i started off with the rear one and obviously that as you can see is exactly where i broke it right after the end of that cap so these are cast iron as you can see they're cast iron they're not made to bend um and they don't bend <laughs> they don't bend a lot at all so number two and number three were at bottom dead center meaning that the pistons were at the bottom of the engine so if anything would have touched or pressed the valve it would have been cylinder number three but then the but then the piston was right at the bottom of the engine um, so this never even touched a valve and that's why i'm not worried about those valves being bent because they never got that far lesson learned and if i can pass that on to anybody make sure when you fit this that you don't put the tool in when you tighten the camshafts down. Fit the camshafts and then put the tool in. Don't tighten it down with the tool in because if you do put it in the wrong way around, you will smash things. Right, so with that said, uh, that was Friday evening when I broke the camshaft. Um, obviously couldn't do much, so I did go to the car show. Obviously, Alice didn't come with me. She stayed here in the workshop. The film is already out on YouTube and you can see a link to it up here. So that meant that Monday morning, uh, I took a chance actually and went off to a scrapyard and I've never been so happy to see an old Focus at a scrapyard, but there was one there and I was able to get the camshafts. So I was able to fit them to the car and I was able to put the car back together again. Uh, upon starting the car, um, and I'm hoping that you can hear this ticking noise. 
So once we got the car started up, we realised that it was it wasn't burning oil anymore like it used to. And it's definitely been burning oil. I'll show you now. So once we got the car started up, we realised that it was it wasn't burning oil anymore like it used to, but it was burning a lot of fuel. So we're left with this mystery ticking noise that we didn't know what it was, um, and. We definitely knew it was over fueling because it was absolutely stinking of fuel well the man that is shane baker the ford fiesta god out there um did actually give me a bit of a tip that turned out to be quite right uh, and it's one i want to pass on to you guys this is injector number one and this is the idle control valve now the idle control valve has got a little plug on there and injector number one has a plug on like that they look very similar and as you'll find out they are identical which means you can put injector number one on the idle control valve on the idle control valve on injector number one the ticking noise you can hear is the injector the signal from the injector making this idle control valve pulse so that's where we're getting the pulsing noise from the reason it's over fueling is because that idle control valve is open constantly and it's just pouring fuel in the system so a quick swap around of these two plugs and it stops over fueling the ticking noise goes away that problem has more than likely been there from the beginning um, and it's because i didn't mark this up when i took it all apart so that's a tip for you uh, mark things up when you take them off put a little bit of masking tape and put idle control valve on here injector number one on a little bit of masking tape so you mark things up so you know what you've taken off and you don't get them mixed up. So that now is officially the longest I've driven Alice since she's had a new engine <laughs> and it's 10 meters. So like I say, the fuel efficiency is terrible at the moment. It takes 40 liters to drive 10 meters. So obviously my deadline's gone, um, but what I want to do now is get her finished and I want to get her ready to take to a show before the end of summer. So basically, uh, the brakes are what I want to get done. I've got a few little electrical gremlins left I don't have any indicators and the lights aren't quite working as I want them to um, so That's just a few electrical problems. I've got to get sorted out um, I've got to connect the wires back in on the back of the dashboard for the switches and stuff um, after that it's road testing time. So I'd like to know from you guys a first road test. How long do you think I should go? Um, I've driven it 10 meters and it, and it went all right there. Um, but how far would you take it to start with? Uh, and would you build up in increments or would you just go for a long drive somewhere and, and hopefully have someone to tell you back if anything happens? Um, but how have you done with your cars? When you've done a start up, how long have you gone? So this episode, I feel a bit more cheerful uh, than I did last time. Um, it, it definitely runs, it definitely drives as it should do. I'm quite happy about that. Um, so there's just now a few little gremlins and a bit of manufacturing to do for the brakes. But other than that, I definitely know now it runs and drives. This is just a basic recap, just to let you know where I am with the car and uh, why the camshaft broke. Basically that it's up and running again. Uh, I've got it fixed and as close as I was beforehand to getting it back on the road again. So I'm feeling a lot more confident now than uh, I was for a few weeks ago. So if you like what you've seen in this episode, press that like and subscribe button. Um, and hopefully in the next video, we'll go for a drive together. So, see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot, and bye-bye.